Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Now, we all know that JavaScript has a lot of tricky gotchas and counterintuitive features. And throughout your job interview process, companies really enjoy asking these questions that test your understanding of these tricky features like scope chain resolution, closures, hoisting. So in this video, I want to go over some of the most popular questions that you might encounter that really test your understanding of these gotchas. All right, let's start off with a slightly easier question. Look at the two two functions on the screen. Are they both going to return the same thing? Why or why not? Feel free to pause the video and then come back once you think you have an answer. At first glance, you might assume that both functions are going to return the object with the property bar with the value of hello. But unfortunately, JavaScript isn't that straightforward. Semicolons are technically optional in JavaScript, and if you leave them out, the parser will automatically add them in for you at the end of the line. So that's why on line three, the JavaScript is actually going to add in a semicolon after return and won't bother running the rest of the function. So the second function is going to return undefined. I've made this mistake time and time again. And what makes this kind of bug frustrating is that it simply returns undefined without throwing any errors. So you don't know where you went wrong. The engine won't bother invoking the rest of the function. That's why it's still good practice to add in semicolons at the end of your statements so you don't create these really sticky bugs. All right, now let's move on to our second question. What is going to be the output of this piece of code? So this question is testing your understanding of JavaScript scope chain and hoisting. Here we've got the variable x defined twice, first on line one and again on line four. The variable defined on line one is available globally because it's not in a function. And the variable x defined on line four is only available inside the girl function. We know that inside the girl function, we also have access to the global scope. If you remember the scope chain resolution rules of JavaScript, but it's not going to bother checking the global scope if it's already found an instance of the variable defined locally. So you're thinking the answer is probably going to be 20, right? But wait, not so fast. You can see here that we're using the x variable on line three before it's being declared on line four. By the time we're actually using the variable on line three, we haven't actually initialized it yet. So at the time that we're console logging x, the value of x is still undefined due to JavaScript hoisting. So the answer to this question isn't 20 or 21, it's undefined. All right, next Next question, what is going to be the output of this piece of code? So this one is a classic tricky interview question since it not only tests your understanding of var and let, but also JavaScript events and timing. At first, you might think this is straightforward. It's just going to print out the number zero to four consecutively each after a one second delay, right? Because of the set timeout. Instead, what actually happens here is that the console is going to print out the number five, five times. Why is that? So this is because set timeout actually waits for the for loop to finish looping before it runs whatever is in the callback function, which is just logging i to the console. By the time the loop has finished looping, var i will equal five. The reason set timeout waits for the loop to finish looping is because set timeout is an asynchronous function provided to you by the browser. Some asynchronous functions can take a long time to finish. For example, like an API call that downloads a resource from a remote server. And we don't want the rest of the code to be blocked while waiting for that to complete, right? One way to fix this problem is to use the let keyword, which was introduced in ES6. And since let is actually block scope, not function scope like var is, a new instance of the variable i will be created in each iteration of the loop. All right, so this next question is also going to ask you what the output of this piece of code is on line 13 and 14. By the way, these types of questions asking you what the output will be is fairly common in job interviews. So feel free to pause this video anytime and think about it for a second. And when you think you have an answer, you can always come back. So the first function is going to return hello world as expected because it's a regular method that belongs to an object. However, the second function is going to return goodbye undefined. Why is that? Unlike a regular function, an arrow function doesn't automatically bind the keyword this to the object that the method belongs to, but instead it, it inherits the outer scope in which the function is defined. So in this example, the outer scope is actually the global scope because we're not inside a function. And so this refers to the window object. The window object doesn't have a farewell property, of course. So that's why the last line is going to return undefined. All right, let's look at our last question. What 
will be the following code's output and why. So when I first saw this hypothetical example, my first thought was who in their right mind would actually write something like this? I mean, we've got this poorly named variable B and it's being declared three different times in one file, but it still serves as a good example to test your understanding of how JavaScript looks up the scope chain to resolve variable values. So if we go through this line by line, we can see that the first line is defining the variable B, line two to 10 is defining a function and the function is finally invoked on line 11. By the time we're actually invoking variable B on line seven, it's been defined three different times. So which one are we actually going to log out? If you think back to how JavaScript resolves variable values by looking up the scope chain, you're going to know that JavaScript starts off with the innermost scope. And if it doesn't find the variable defined in that inner scope, it's going to go level by level outwards. And if it finds the variable, it's not going to go further up the chain. So therefore, even though variable B exists in the outer scope and in the global scope, because we've already found a declaration in the local scope, we're not going to bother going looking outside. So therefore, as you guessed it, the answer to this question is going to be three. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my other two videos on common JavaScript interview questions. I'll link that somewhere up here and uh, I will see you in the next one. See you later. Bye. <laughs>